Hi guys, in this series, we'll build a custom camera in Swift 4 using Xcode 9. Xcode 9 is fast and powerful and works well with both Swift 3 and 4. Alright, let's get started. First, let's download and install Xcode 9 beta. If you already installed Xcode before, we suggest you update to the latest version. Once you finish installing Xcode, you can find it in the launch pad. All right, let's open it. When first opening up Xcode, you will notice a few options in the version of Xcode. Let's create a new, pro new project. iOS 11 introduces ArcKit Framework, which allows you to easily create unparalleled augmented reality experiences for apps. You can choose this template to get started with an augmented reality app. For educational purposes, we'll use single view application. Enter your app name in the product name field. Don't hesitate to choose your own app name. Then hit next and create. Here's our project. The AV foundation framework is more complicated than a standard camera interface of the camera app on the iPhone, but also far more flexible and powerful for building a fully custom camera interface. Let's take a look at the big picture. All right. We need to take care of these components. You take capture devices, use them to create capture inputs, provide the session with these inputs, and then save the result in capture outputs. The capture session is an object that manages capture activity and coordinates the flow of data from input devices to capture outputs. So the capture session is the heart of AV Foundation. Okay, go back to our project and open the storyboard. We'll use this default view controller to we'll take control the, the built-in cameras We're going and to capture build a images simple interface using AV that offers a full framework. screen experience with a single capture button at the, at the bottom of the screen. When the user taps the capture button, it should capture the photo in full resolution and the user can save it to the photo library. To have better user experience, let's choose black color for the background. So that the app is loaded, users can see the black screen if the camera isn't running. We don't need the title, so just delete it. Alright, let's set up color for the camera button. Simply choose the white color for it. Okay, the button now is quite small, so we'll increase the size of it. We simply choose 60 for both width and height. Very good. Next, let's apply Auto Layout to the camera button to make it display nicely on various iOS devices. We'll fix width and height, and it's going to be 60. The button is 20 points away from the bottom of the view. Then hit Add 3 Constraints. OK. Next, we wanted to place the button at the center of the view. Just check on horizontally in container iPhones are available in different screen sizes, including 3.5 inch, 4 inch, 4.7 inch, and 5.5 inch. Without using auto layout, it would be very hard for you to create an app that supports all screen resolutions. This is why I want to show you auto layout at the very beginning of this series, rather than jumping right into coding a real app. All right, this is the new design for simulator in Xcode 9. You can scale up and down your simulator by using command and one or two or three. Or you can go to the window at the top, then choose scale option. Let's scale that to 50%. Very good. We want the camera button to be a circle. The corner radius of it needs to be half its frame height or width. Double click on the key path field of the new attribute to edit the key path for the attribute. Set the value to layer.cornerRadius and hit return to confirm. The type attribute is number and value is 30. Xcode provides two ways to edit the layer properties. We also can directly update its properties through code. Enable the clip to bounds option so that the content to be clipped to the rounded corners. Very good. The UI looks even better without writing a line of code. You're free to alter the value of corner radius and see what you get. Okay, next let's drag another view controller into storyboard. We'll use it to display a still image after taking the photo. So we also need an object to show up the image. Let's search for UI image, then put one into the new view controller.
OK. Make it cover the whole view. Then apply auto layout to it. Add zero constraints to top, left, bottom, and right. Good. Next, we need a view. It'll contain save and cancel buttons, so that the user can save images to the photo album or cancel it. OK. Just put it at the top of the view. We'll fix it at the top by using auto layout. Then set the background color. Simply choose black color with alpha is 0.5. Cool. We now need to set the height for it, then add constraints as usual. Just add zero constraints to top, left, and right, then fix the height. All right. Let's drag cancel button into this view. We need to set title for its button. Cancel. OK. Similarly, we also need save button. So just put one into this view at the right hand side. The title is save. The background is kind of dark, so we use a neutral white text color for button. It's a common practice to use your brand color though. Then apply auto layout to it. Let's do the same for save button. Apply auto layout and choose a text color for it. Very good. Both view controllers are associated with the corresponding class. We had view controller class for the camera view controller. Let's create one for preview. We can use shortcut key, command N, or simply go to file, choose new, then file, to create a new file. Select Coco Touch class template then, name it preview view controller. All right, here are new class for preview view controller. It's associated with preview view controller in storyboard. So we need to create an outlet variable and action method to handle business logic. Hold control, then drag from cancel button to our class. OK. So let's set the custom class of controller in storyboard to preview view controller. We now can connect all UI objects to preview class. When the cancel button is tapped, it will call cancel button touch up inside action method. We also create an action for save button. The save button is connected with the save button touch up inside action method. Choose the type of connection to action. Connect. Good. By default, view controller is associated with the view controller class. So we, need, we now just need to create an outlet and action for the camera button so that when the camera button is tapped, it will call the action method. Call camera button touch up inside, which is now without any implementation. All right. The preview view controller is designed for displaying an image after taking the photo, so we need a way to switch to preview from view controller. Hold control, then drag from view controller to preview. We just created a segue. To switch view, let's name it. Something like show photo segu. Then hit enter. OK. We now can call this segu to switch by using identifier of it. We want to switch to preview view controller when camera button is tapped. Perform segu method will initiate the segu with the, with the specified identifier. Sender is the object that we want to use to initiate the segu. For now, just set it to nil. All right, let's see the result. Tap on the camera button. Very good. In the next video, we'll learn how to set up camera and some new features of Xcode 9. See you there.